Hi guys! So July is over and it's time to go through my August planner lineup with you. There are a couple of old traditional favourites of mine in here and there have also been some new additions and a shocking change. So first up is my Hobonichi Cousin. This is my work planner. I've used a cousin as my work planner for the past two and nearly a half years now. This is the third year and I'm using it the same way that I have been for the last year or so at least. So this is a sack cover made by Hobonichi, a silicone cover which I really love. It's very stretchy and satisfying and lightweight and I won't go through this in depth because I'll do a separate updated flip through of my cousin soon but basically I just use this as my weekly overview. I use the daily pages for detailed work notes or daily to-dos on busy days and I use the monthly spreads for more bird's eye view project planning. So like I said I'll, I'll go through that in more detail in another video but nothing has really changed there. Then this is my A5 Leuchtturm week on two page planner which I use as a pretty planner. So this just gives an overview of my week including work and personal but with a focus on personal and it's basically just an excuse for me to use lots of Mambi stickers from their value packs which I'm totally addicted to and it just makes me so happy and it makes me smile every day. So I'll do a detailed flip through of this as well because I think it's been a while since I showed it and it's just a lot of fun because you know every week is a different spread and I really like decorating it and I really like opening it every day and using it. So it's a combination of to-do lists, appointments, events, basically anything that they make a Mambi sticker for. <laughs> I have a, a few other stickers as well from Etsy shops from the UK but it's mostly Mambi and it's just a chance to have a very satisfying, colourful, pretty planner. Then I have a new edition which I started at the beginning of July. This is the large Erin Condren hardbound planner in the colourful mid-century circles design and this was a completely new experiment because obviously these planners just started at the beginning of July so I introduced this as my home planner, so this has joint appointments and events and tasks that have to do with both me and James and our dogs. And it's also a pretty planner as you can see. So I have been having so much fun with this, I am totally enamoured of it, I just love it, it's amazing. So interestingly, this is the first time that I've ever had a pretty planner with a monthly spread because my Leuchtturm doesn't have monthly spreads and I've had a lot of fun decorating July and setting out all of our main events so I just use this for an overview of the month for my work schedule, James's work schedule, when we're away, etc. Just kind of bare, a bare overview basically, no details. And then I use the weekly spreads for a combination of three different things so because it's got these three different sections I've divided it into our whereabouts, so James's work schedule, my work schedule, if we're away, things to do with our dogs, so if they need flea medicine, if they need their teeth brushed, Tails has eye medicine every day, that kind of thing, if they have a vet appointment, if a vet appointment needs to be booked for them, anything like that. And then here is tasks for one or both of us or things that affect the whole flat, so a couple of times I tried what's for dinner and then I abandoned that. This is my way with meal planning. Sometimes I just put a sticker on. Usually as you can see I can, I'm keeping this kind of white space friendly unlike my personal pretty planner where I just like to cover the whole thing with stickers. Here there is a bit of decoration so like this weekend banner and, and I put quotes at the bottom here but and then sometimes like here and here but for the most part it's just functional stickers and then if if there's an empty space I just leave it blank. So see these arrows and circles these are all tails as eye medicine because he has to have his eye medicine every day so you know we're supposed to tick that when he's had it so that we know that it's already happened. 
here's recycling because that's something that one or both of us has to remember to do same thing that's it's in the dog column whereabouts appointments sometimes I use it to make note of something like we bought a charcoal filter for a washer and so I made a note that that's when we started using it because you have to change it every six months and then just a bit of decoration around the side so I'm really really having fun with this and it's also perfect as a home planner because it's big so it stays open easily it lies flat it's easy to see we leave it out on the table and it's amazing I haven't decorated the August monthly spread or this week yet because I haven't had time but I'm really looking forward to this this is like a highlight of my week and I absolutely love it so I'm really really happy that this has entered the rotation and then we get on to the more specialist planners so the, the three that I just showed you are kind of I guess the sort of core of my planning system and then I have this one the smaller and condren also in the mid-century circles design which I use as an expenses tracker. So in the monthly spread, I write my bank balance, which I am trying to check every day. And I've also noted down paydays. And then in the weekly spread, I just write down my expenses every day. And I have a few little icons. If it's food, I guess a little triangle. And if it's something that I really didn't have to buy, like that was a decadent planner <laughs> expense, basically, then I put an exclamation mark next to it so I can tell how many of those there are and then at the end of the week I added up and put in a total which I haven't done yet this week and I just use it like that it's very very basic very plain no decoration at all the paper is not very good with fountain pens as you can see there's quite a lot of bleed through and ghosting but I don't mind because this is just such a basic like it's it doesn't have to look beautiful and I really enjoy it and I love the layout, it's perfect for this, and I like the way it looks, I like the color scheme, so it's fine. Here I have just circled all of my paydays for the 18 months that this planner goes for. So I really, really like this. It's perfect as an expense planner because it has just the right amount of space in the daily spreads. You can see the whole week you have a space to put in your totals. And I also like the fact that it doesn't have a lot of frills at the beginning, it just has what you need. Here, in this spread where you get the 12 blank boxes, I wrote in some motivational things about finances, like spend wisely and enjoy abundance and stuff like that. So that is my expenses tracker. And finally, we have my current daily planner, which is an undated extra large Molsky notebook. So I talked about this in my last video where I went through my conclusions for One Book July, and one of them was that I absolutely love this notebook and want to keep using it. So my daily planner is just a to-do list, so it doesn't have to be dated, and this is quite big. It's B5 size, more or less, so there's a lot of space, and I can use more than one day. I can use, one page can last for more than one day, so I basically just use a page until it's full and then go on to the next page. For this one, I accidentally wrote on this page instead of this side, so I'm going to go back and write on this side because, as you can see, this paper does really well with fountain pens, amazingly, surprisingly to me, for Moleskine. So I can write on this side as well. So that is my planner lineup. Now, you might be wondering, what is the shocking surprise? Or you might be wondering, wait a second, what happened to the weeks? So yes, that is a shocking surprise. Where is my weeks? You'll see, it's not in the lineup. So I have had a Hobonichi weeks for the past two years, which I've used as a personal planner. And a really, really strange thing happened recently. This is my weeks, but it's not in the lineup. So. I almost did a Planner Addict Dilemma video about this because I was really, really agonizing about it for quite a while, a couple of weeks ago. And then I resolved it before I had a chance to make the video because I was agonizing about it for quite a few days, but I was just so busy with work that I didn't have a chance to make a video. So basically, I can tell you the story now. 
so this is like a resolved planner addict dilemma, although I still feel kind of uneasy about it because it was quite a shock. So basically, when I got this this Erin Condren at the beginning of July, which was going to be a home planner, all of a sudden for the first time I had this home planner which I absolutely loved and loved decorating and really felt totally blissful about. I think because it's it's a hardbound planner and as you know bound planners are my favorite. I love them. I love the fact that they're easily archivable and I because this is a, a home planner I wanted this to be a planner that would end up being like a de facto scrapbook. It's not a scrapbook, it's a planner because I, I'm no good at memory keeping, I'm no good at journaling, I just don't do them for some reason. If something has already happened I just lose interest in it and I don't care about recording it, but I really like planning. So I thought because I've had so much fun decorating this and it is a record of what we've been doing, I'd like to keep this and put it on the shelf and have it for us to look back on so we can see what we were doing this year. And I kind of felt like somehow, even though I had intentionally picked this as a home planner, so decided that this would be a home planner so that it wouldn't clash with this as my personal planner, I somehow started to feel like having two pretty planners was like, it felt redundant to me, even though they were recording the same information. It, sorry, even though they weren't recording the same information, this is joint stuff. This is like my own personal stuff. It, it, it didn't, this is my like weekly overview. It doesn't have any of information about where James is or tasks that we have to do together. But there is quite a bit of overlap because, you know, naturally a lot of tasks that we both have to do are also tasks that I would record in here and I was using stickers for both of them and it somehow started to freak me out. And then I started thinking maybe I should get rid of this pretty planner and just use this as my only pretty planner. But I love this so much that that made me upset too. And then I started thinking about my weeks, which was my personal planner and also my wallet. In my weeks, I was writing down a lot of basically the same information that was in this and a lot of it was in this too. But this has a purpose because it's for James and me both to look at and I basically maintain it because I'm like the number one planner addict in the household, but he uses it so he consults it. So that had a purpose. There, it didn't make sense to get rid of this one. These and the, this and this, basically this planner, I just started at the beginning of the year with the sole purpose of being able to use Mambi stickers. That was its raison d'etre. <laughs> because I had my work planner and my personal planner, right? So I was kind of going through a sort of planner identity crisis because I felt like this planner was redundant and now that I had another pretty planner, even though it was filling a different function, it just felt like this was particularly redundant and that started to bug me because I think maybe it was the spirit of One Book July, even though I was not intentionally doing the One Book July version 1.0 where you have one book and I didn't want to do that and I'm happy with having more than one book, but somehow in my head I was kind of feeling like I'd like to streamline a bit, I'd like to get rid of anything that's redundant because I like having multiple planners because I like categorizing my life in ways that make sense to me so I like dividing work and personal and I like having a separate home planner so that we can all see it. Well James and me, the dogs don't look at it but <laughs> um, I felt like there was too much redundancy in the system and when so when it's redundant then you just end up not using something. So this is like such a labor of love. I just love looking at this. I love going back over the old spreads. It brings back so many memories. It's so colorful and I really wanted to keep this and so I thought I don't want to abandon this halfway through the year. Then I considered various things. I thought maybe I'll make it into a gratitude journal but then I wouldn't have been able to use all the cool Mambi stickers like you know laundry and like coffee and maybe coffee could go in gratitude but a lot of them couldn't. The to-dos, all of that kind of stuff, it wouldn't work as a gratitude journal and I just knew that I wouldn't put, have so much fun with it if it was a gratitude journal only. And then I thought maybe gratitude in combination with expenses but I knew that wouldn't work because I just started this which I love and is perfect for it. So after much agonizing all of a sudden this shocking thought occurred to me which is wait a second, wh why not just use this as my personal planner because it's got all the same information in it as the Weeks has. And the Weeks isn't pretty. And I already have 
a planner that's not pretty, my, works, my work planner. So for my personal planner, why not just have it be pretty? But the weeks has all this other information in it because it has all the notes pages at the back. So it has all these checklists of things like my planner lineups and potential planner uses and just general notes, packing lists and video ideas, wish lists, films to watch, etc. And then I also use it for tracking and I was using it for like keeping track of my online orders. So and I also was using it as a wallet. So the first thing I did was separate out the wallet and I put the wallet into a core core travel travel wallet which I had used before initially as a week's cover. And that is working fine and I actually really like it because it was stressing me out having my wallet and my weeks together because I would take out my weeks all the time to write in it and then I'd worry where's my wallet? Oh my god, all of my cards are in here if I couldn't find it because there was so much stuff in my bag. So separating out the wallet was really good because I don't take out my wallet as much as I take out my planner and so I could just leave it in my bag and know that it would be there and not always like panic about what I'd done with my wallet. I never actually lost my wallet when it was in my planner but I just had this stress on a daily basis of like if I couldn't instantly find it I was like oh, where are all of my cards? Where's my wallet? <laughs> Somehow where, whereas when it's when it's separate I don't have that problem I don't know why but so then I thought like well I can't just abandon the weeks halfway through the year because I've you know been using it since November and it just felt like betraying an, an old friend so what I arrived at temporarily and I still I'm not really sure what to do about this long term is that I'm still using this as a tracker so I've made it into a tracker so I track things like vitamins and I've, I'm also using it as a gratitude journal and still using it as an online order tracker and keeping all the notes. So it's basically become a essentially like the collections and tracking portion of a bullet journal. It's not a planner. So I leave it at home. I don't take it out with me. And I just use it to record things basically. And I didn't include it in my planner lineup because that is not a planner. It's something else. And also because I'm not really sure how long that will last. I am still using it for those things, but I feel like definitely when it runs out in December that I'll switch most of those functions over to this because this has actually got a space in the beginning that I haven't been using where you can track all kinds of things. So this is perfect for tracking a lot of different kinds of things. And then you also have this, which is just like a tracker. So this is good for things like vitamins and medicine and stuff like that. And it also has a lot of notes pages at the end, which I could make more use of. So for things like video ideas and TV shows that I want to watch and wish lists and stuff, I think that there's enough room for it. So the only things are that I wouldn't have a space where I could like just write and not worry about it being pretty because I really want this to be pretty and full of stickers. So I don't want to dedicate the back note pages to just scrawling notes. So I'm still thinking about that. I think I could just keep a notepad in the back if I just want to write things down because it has got this pocket. So if I just want to write something that's not work related and not worry about it being pretty, I think I might do that. But yeah, that's my big shocking news. My weeks is not part of my planner lineup. And that is shocking to me, and I'm sure will be shocking to some of you, but that is the situation at the moment. And I'm actually really happy with this because I have a wallet which is separate from my planner lineup. I have my personal planner, which is pretty. I have my work planner. I have the home planner. I have the expense tracker. And I have the daily planner, which is just an undated notebook. And so I can switch that in and out. And I feel like it's a really, streamlined, lean, sensible planning system that works really well for me, it has everything that I want, it's functional, and I also have some space to pretty plan, which I really enjoy. So that is my system at the moment. I'm sure that in another month or so it will have changed again, and I will let you know what's happening there. But in the meantime, I'll do an update on a couple of these planners individually so that uh, I can go through in more detail how I've been using them. So I hope that you enjoyed this and are not too shocked and horrified by these dramatic developments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back again soon. Bye.